Steve, I think it's a foregone conclusion for a while, but it became official tonight. You guys clinched your playoff spot. You know, was there a reaction in the locker room, and, and how does it feel just to kind of get that part of it done? Yeah, I mean, it's it's great. Um, you know, I think we have we have our eyes on on bigger things, but uh, you know, it's a nice first step to to, to clinch a berth, and uh, you know, for this group facing all we faced uh, to be in this position and this with ten games left is very positive. Michael Grady, Yes Network. Uh, Coach, how, how big was the play of that that second unit, and especially that stretch? I think it was third heading to the fourth. Toronto got some momentum, erased the ten point deficit, uh, but you stuck with those guys and they made plays. Yeah, they were great. You know, uh, Tyler, Mike James was great. Um, you know, we played with a little more pace and made it, I think, more difficult for them defensively. They do such a good job scrambling and making it hard for you. The more static you are, I think that, that really fuels their defense. So we were able to spread them out, make plays, made some shots, made them guard in space, uh, and, and we were scrappy defensively. So I'm you know, really proud of that second year for sure. Given Toronto's style of play, what did you guys have to figure out as the game went along to, to, to get some sustained success? Yeah, like I said, you know, I think they, they scramble incredibly well. They speed you up. They make you play at a pace just... just uh, you know, north of where you normally play at. So I think it took us time to get used to that. Um, you know, I think also the more we, we were able to spread them out and play with a little pace, like I said, make them guard in space. Um, you know, we were able to, to create bigger openings, bigger gaps, longer rotations, um, which made it more difficult for them. Alex Schiffer, The Athletic. Hey, Steve, it seems like they were really capitalizing on the offensive rebounding in the first half. Just what would you make your guys' issues there? Yeah, you know, we talked about it at halftime. We said if it wasn't, I think it was 15-2 on the offensive glass at halftime, it, it, without that discrepancy, we would have been up 15 points. So, you know, I think uh, we, we held them to four uh, second chance points in the second half. So it was a much improved effort and, and, and we, we win by 15 or so. So, you know, 13. So, you know, that was the difference. We kept them off the glass. You know, our defense was solid in the fourth quarter, holding them to 20 points. And obviously, like we said, the second unit, uh, and the starters at the end of the game, you know, really picked them apart. Brian Lewis, New York Post. Hey, Steve. Um, when you're talking about the second unit, I mean, obviously, Tyler's been with you and Blake's been with you. But, I mean, what have you seen from Mike James that you could trust him in these kind of moments when basically he's only been around a few days and for you to be no. using him down the stretch? Well, he's an athletic uh, and, and skilled player. You know, if, as long as he, he plays simple and makes good basketball plays like he has with us, you know, those first few games, um, you know, he can play a role for us. You know, he, can really, he has a burst of pace. He can get in the paint, um, play draw and kick. He also obviously showed that he can score the ball. And we know that from his history. So, but if he can, you know, be that, uh, you know, guard that ups the pace, that penetrates, draws def the defense and makes the extra pass. That's a huge value add for our team. So, you know, really, really, uh, I think great performance from him tonight. And those are some of the tools that, that he can bring to the table for us. Matt Brooks, Nets Daily. Hey, Steve, just curious about your thoughts on Blake and just his transformation as a whole, um, really just from where he was um, in, in Los Angeles and Detroit and from what he's doing for you guys now. Yeah, I mean, Blake's been been great. Uh, just like, you know, his IQ, uh, his toughness, his physicality, his willingness to give up his body and be physical. Um, you know, I think it's a different role from him from being the the guy that's asked to carry and produce. You know, he's a complimentary player now, and he's you know accepted uh, you know that with with you know joy and pride, and, and it has been unbelievable at leading. I think the league for 36 in charges and, you know, just been, uh, you know, a guy that's been happy to, to, to facilitate for his teammates, score when he needs to and just play a role. And, you know, it's such a pivotal role to have guys that give us versatility. He's making threes. He, he can post up smaller guys. He, you know, can be physical in the paint. So it's, he's been great. And just his, his maturity and his IQ uh, have been a big help for our team. Christian Winfield, New York Daily News. Hey, Coach, uh, congratulations on the win. I mean, you, you speak a lot over the course of the season about building that connectivity and that cohesion. Um, is it fair to say that that was on display today in a game where 30 assists on 40 made baskets? You don't have Kyrie performing at a high level, but everybody else steps in. And it seems to be a byproduct of, you know, drive, kick, swing, swing, find the open man against a defense like this. Yeah, you know, we haven't had a lot of time. You know, you know we have uh, a player that's been with us a week, you know, playing down the stretch. So that's just the type of season it's been. But... 
You know, tonight was a, was a night where I think the connectivity showed in that Toronto really put us under duress. They, they play so hard and they fly around and make it difficult for you when things aren't going your way. You know, you can start to splinter and our guys stuck with it, you know, faced some adversity throughout the game, didn't play their best basketball in stretches, but never wavered. They stayed together and they had the resolve to come back. And I think that's a product of um, the connectivity. So that, you know, we, while we don't have the, the utmost connectivity because we haven't had a lot of time together, we have that connectivity and spirit. And that's been helping us, I think, a great deal. Last question, Steve Lichtenstein, WFN. Hi, Steve. Uh, your philosophy of letting guys play through foul trouble, whether it's Joe Early with three, Jeff Waite with five, is that something that was, you know, a personal philosophy or something that the analytics showed you? A little bit of both. I think analytics for sure uh, drive some of that. Um, but, you know, we have we have we have some guys that can step in and play if someone, you know, gets that extra foul that that is, you know, one too many and you got to sit them down for a long stretch, you know, so. You know, we trust the guys a little bit. We also know it's a, it's a long game. We got a lot of rotations. So it's not the end of the world if a guy gets you know, his fourth too soon or whatever it may be. So, uh, well, what's not ideal, I think we're willing to roll the dice a little bit. And I think analytics definitely leans in that direction as well.